So we've discussed the strategic weapons utilized by both Mars and Earth during the events of the Expanse, mostly used in their Cold War, as methods of directly attacking the opponent's planet, but I figured today we could take a look at the countermeasures in place to defend these planets. Let's take a closer look at planetary defense within the Expanse. I'm Colin, and this is Sci-Fi Deep Dive. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, to head down below and hit that subscribe button. So, as we discussed previously, nuclear weapons played a very key role in the ongoing Cold War between the UN and the MCR, the rivalry between Earth and Mars that plays a pretty significant role in the first few seasons of The Expanse. This constant rivalry, this bitter back and forth, this Cold War, led to a situation where at any moment both sides could end up flinging world-destroying nuclear weapons at one another, causing dual apocalypses on two separate planets. And while both worlds did field significant offensive capabilities in the form of strategic nuclear weapons mounted on missiles, like we've discussed, they also fielded systems designed to defend their planets against such attacks, and today we're going to take a closer look at those systems deployed by both Earth and Mars. Now, before we go any further, I would like to note that we know a lot more about the planetary defense systems of Earth than we do about Mars, however, it's likely that they're both similar. I will be making some assumptions about the way Mars defends itself against incoming attack, but I assure you they will be educated assumptions, and I will make it clear when I'm drawing off of information that isn't concrete. So let's just jump right in and talk about Earth's defenses first. And there's one system that probably comes to mind, I actually mentioned it before, and that's railguns. Earth was defended by a vast network of railguns, and while these railguns were primarily intended to shoot down incoming asteroids, they are very certainly capable of shooting down incoming missiles as well, if timed correctly. We actually see during the events of the UNMCR war when a lone missile manages to be fired from one of the stealth platforms against Earth, that the railguns do the best they can to intercept as many of the warheads as possible. These railguns are placed on stationary satellites around the planet, and they seem to be basically an automated system, automatically tracking incoming projectiles, be they missiles or asteroids, and firing on them with coordinated attacks from multiple different orbital railgun stations. We see these railguns later used to shoot down asteroids, which, like I said, was likely their intended purpose. Later on in the show, as Marco Anaros hurdles stealth asteroids at Earth, we see these railguns doing their best to shoot down incoming asteroids, which like I said, is likely their intended purpose, and occasionally they do succeed against Marco's stealth asteroids. However, they are very reliant on radar systems that track incoming projectiles, like the asteroids or missiles I've been mentioning, and without those radar systems being able to track these targets, these railguns are pretty useless. But railguns were never ideal for intercepting incoming projectiles. As many of us know, a guided projectile would have a significant amount of time to dodge an incoming railgun shot were it aware of the railgun firing. That brings me to the final method that I think Earth may have used in defending itself against incoming projectiles, and this is something that we don't see on screen, but I would wager it's likely there. And that's interceptor missiles. It's actually a system we have here in real life for defending countries against ballistic missile attacks. I could see missiles being launched from across the surface of Earth or from orbital stations in orbit of the planet, and being directed to intercept incoming missiles or asteroids. Now, it's likely that these missiles, since they would be guided and more expensive than railgun rounds, are likely more intended for engaging targets that have guidance systems of their own, more specifically ballistic missiles and strategic weapons deployed by Earth's adversaries, while the railguns are more intended for asteroids, which wouldn't dodge railgun rounds. But that's Earth's defenses, let's talk a little bit about Mars. Now, before I get into Mars's defenses, I will say that almost all of this is speculative, so keep that in mind. I would wager that, like Earth, Mars does likely have orbital railgun platforms, however, there probably isn't quite as many. As we see with the Martian Navy compared to the UNN, Mars doesn't seem to rely as heavily on railguns as Earth does. 
This is likely due to Mars's advanced computer technology that allow their torpedoes to be more effective weapon systems than their adversaries' torpedoes. Basically, as a result, Mars's navy seems to lean more heavily on torpedoes, and I would almost wager that in a similar vein, their planetary defense likely leans more heavily on missiles. I'm sure they have a handful of railgun platforms in orbit that we just never see, but I would wager that they have a much larger complement of interceptor missiles located both on the surface of Mars, on Mars' two moons, as well as in orbital platforms around the planet, all designed to defend Mars against incoming attacks from Earth. That would just seem to make sense for Mars to use more sophisticated guided weapons that have a better chance of hitting their target, as opposed to a larger number of cheaper dumb projectiles that could be fired in larger quantities, which sort of fits the doctrine of the UN. And I would imagine the breakdown of the purposes of these two weapon systems are fairly similar to that over Earth, where the railguns are more intended for engaging asteroids which aren't really going to dodge or attacks, while the missile systems are designed to sort of counter incoming ballistic weapons like missiles fired by Earth, which may be able to dodge railgun rounds fired at them. Ultimately, you end up in a weird situation where Earth is more reliant on railguns, which would be less effective against Mars's more advanced missiles, well, Mars is fielding a missile system which would be ridiculously effective against Earth's incoming weapons. Still, in an engagement, I would imagine both sides would likely wipe each other out in a situation very similar to a nuclear war here on Earth. I would wager that the UN would ultimately end up having to fire more weapons against Mars than Mars having to fire against Earth. And those weapons play a pretty crucial role in the strategic standoff between the UN and the MCR, and if you'd like to learn about the strategic weapons within the Expanse, I'll leave a link up here to my video on that. And I'd like you to let me know down in the comments which one you think is more effective at intercepting incoming ballistic missiles. Do you think railguns are a better choice, since they are basically instantaneous, and if you have a large network of them, they can fire a pretty withering array of shots? Or do you think missiles are the right way to go, because they can hone on to and track targets, even as they maneuver in attempts to avoid incoming uh, interdiction weapons? And if you have anything else you'd like to see me cover in The Expanse, leave that down below in the comments as well. Last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, head down below and hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos. So, for Sci-Fi Deep Dive, I'm Colin, and I will see you next time.